So before I bring on uh, the next speaker, I just wanted to mention that I've been in the space since 2011. So I have run a bunch of different, played a, a bunch of different roles as advisor, as speaker, as miner, as advocate. And when it comes to mining, um, I run my own mining operation, but when it comes to mining expertise, I rely on one person over all these years, and uh, I definitely wanted to bring this person into the space to share with you so you can gain the knowledge. So he's my go-to expert. So uh, without further ado, sad respect, my respect. Thank you, Mr. Risberg. Um, I'm probably going to only do a minute or two, uh, maybe a little bit longer as a presentation, and focus more on questions. I gain a lot from you guys. Uh, I can teach you know anything that, that you guys want to know. Uh, my specialty is GPU mining, um, but let's uh, I guess just start with the, the history of uh, I guess Bitcoin mining. So when uh, Satoshi Nakamoto first made uh, Bitcoin, the way to secure the network was SHA-256 algorithm. Uh, initially, every 10 or so minutes, 50 Bitcoin would be minted, and whatever miner got to secure that block was rewarded with that 50 Bitcoin. Every four years, that is half. So four years after that, which was 2013, went down to 25 Bitcoin. After that, down to 12.5. And actually, in a year and a half, it's going to go about down to 6.25. In 122 years, in the year 2140, there will be the last Bitcoin minted. At that point, transaction fees will be what miners are rewarded with. So miners are always going to be around. They're not going anywhere. Uh, initially, it started with CPU mining, so anybody could do it. Then GPU mining, gamers started doing it, and then FPGAs, that's another story. And now ASICs really took over Bitcoin mining uh, with uh, Bitmain's S. Nine now that's fourteen, and it's just going to keep getting uh, you know more and more ASIC related. But there are algorithms like uh, ePash, which is uh, Ethereum, that still use mostly GPU mining. Even though Bitmain does have an ASIC out for it, it's not much more efficient than what we're actually running uh, in our farm. Five years ago, we started a car dealership, and two years ago, uh, in the office of this car dealership, we bought eight GPUs, put them in the office, started mining. Uh, we were mining probably an Ethereum a day. I mean, this was just you know a uh, thousand dollars worth of equipment mining at least Ethereum a day. Uh, the office started getting hot. This is in Florida, so we moved it out to the warehouse. Um, about a year later, we're running 320 GPUs. Uh, it's Really, really hot in the warehouse, but you know it's it's still profitable even at today's prices. We're at about a 40 to 50 percent profit margin uh, on our mining operation, and this is when Ethereum was 80 dollars a few days ago. So imagine what it could be when Ethereum, if Ethereum goes back to uh, the 1400 it was at. Um, so this uh, this conference is about the future of crypto. So future of mining, I see. Uh, I mean, in the individual aspects, uh, individuals, instead of having space heaters, which are literally just a coil wasting electricity, could be miners. I mean, you could have a miner in your house and it creates heat. So instead of wasting the electricity uh, but turning into heat, you could at least be getting the heat from mining cryptocurrencies. So you'd offset a little bit of the electricity cost uh, every month. Um, in a little bit of a bigger aspect, uh, towns could use uh, cryptocurrency mining farms as income. Towns that have hydroelectric power plants near them, or solar power plants, or uh, a lot of winds that use wind turbines. Uh, nuclear power plants could actually use them for throttling, because uh, you can't turn off a nuclear reaction. So what nuclear power plants do now is have a turbine that they, they send the, the extra energy through, and again, wasted energy. So a cryptocurrency mining operation would actually be able to help a nuclear power plant be able to throttle uh, their reaction because you can't again you can't shut it off. Um, so in the future, I see a lot of wind, a lot of solar, a lot of uh, sustainable energy being used in, in cryptocurrency mining. And um, compared to the you know hundreds of thousands of servers, Visa and Mastercard and all the banks you're using, I think this is much more efficient and better for our environment. So. 
Questions? So, you just said everybody's going to mine in the future, right? You have to say that. Sure. Is not cryptocurrency? Yeah, I mean, as I was saying with uh, with uh, Bitcoin, even after 2140, um, in that year when the last Bitcoin is uh, minted, there's transaction fees. So with these transaction fees, as long as the Bitcoin network is active and people are, you know, I, I send you Bitcoin and it costs, you know, point zero zero, uh, let's say 100 Satoshis. And if a thousand of those are happening in a day, and there's you know a couple hundred miners are the only ones taking those transaction fees in. I mean that's a hefty sum. You could actually see people uh, being more profitable, getting money off of transactions. I mean it, it's uh, what like a couple percent of the uh, Visa network Bitcoin compared to the Visa network is maybe one or two percent, and transaction fees are pretty much negligible. They're, the the miners are relying on the block reward right now, but that could transition to. Um, easily to the transaction fees. And obviously Bitcoin isn't the only uh, cryptocurrency to mine. I mean, that Ethereum uh, is going to go forever. I mean, that there's, uh, it, it, ha it goes, there's a uh, block reward gets cut down. It actually recently got cut down from two, uh, from three to two. And they plan on doing that more and more until it goes to proof of stake, but they uh, plan to switch between proof of stake and proof of work. It's not gonna be 100% proof of stake ever unless the community decides it. So. Technically, mining will always be around, if not with uh, Bitcoin's transaction fees, a new blockchain coming up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, my other question is, you know, how you can fork and have, you know, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. You know, I can have my own Bitcoin, everybody can have it, right? What happens in that case? Um, if there's like a 10 thousands of Bitcoins. You choose which one you want to secure. I mean, when... Is it, okay, there's dilute the main Bitcoin, that's the question. Uh, yeah, but the nodes that choose, so, so when Bitcoin forks uh, last year, was it August or November? August or last year? Whenever it forked last year, uh, there was Bitcoin and then Bitcoin Cash. That was the uh, two big ones, and then Bitcoin Gold came and a bunch of other ones. But um, the nodes, the ones that the nodes pick are the one that the Bitcoin core goes to. So if you're mining Bitcoin and the fork happens, you actually have to be proactive to switch to the new algorithm or I guess the new fork. So uh, when Bitcoin core was being mined and Bitcoin cash came out, unless you actually told it to go to Bitcoin cash, you're gonna be mining Bitcoin core indefinitely. So you really don't have to do anything when those forks happen. I mean, there's probably a hundred Bitcoin at this point and everybody that started mining Bitcoin five years ago is still mining Bitcoin if they didn't touch it. So I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that F F GPU is like not working well in the XP, so you, you try it like F GPU. Uh, yeah, uh, FPGAs, if, if uh, you guys don't know, are field programmable gate arrays, which are sort of between a GPU and an ASIC on uh, efficiency and being able to um, be specific to an algorithm. CPUs and GPUs, you can easily switch between algorithms. Sometimes they're not efficient, sometimes they are. Uh, field programmable gate arrays have bit streams, and these can be chosen for a specific algorithm. Uh, the problem with, uh, I mean, FPGAs well, with Bitcoin, which was, I think, two years ago, a lot of people were starting to use those before the ASICs came out. Um, the problem with that is you, you really need somebody that's specific to, to bit streams, so any change in the algorithm, any fork, any little change, you need to make a whole new bit stream. Um, we actually just got in the uh, SQRL uh, ACORN 101, which is the new FPGAs that are supposed to make the ePash um, algorithm more efficient. So you have you know four or five GPUs, and you put an ACORN uh, FPGA in the M.2 slot of your motherboard, and it actually makes it more efficient um, uses less energy and raises the hash rate, but in an actual FPGA just mining, unless there aren't any ASICs out and you have somebody that knows how to make bit streams, FPGAs just aren't there for cost benefit analysis currently. What about like a piece of mining for mining like in Yeah, I mean, uh, 
Yeah, ASICs, ASICs for those are, are going to be the most efficient. Uh, like I was saying before, the uh, the ePash um, miner that, that Bitmain came out with, I think it's 180 mega hash per second and 800 uh, watts, which is pretty good. But we're at 100, uh, just, just to like comparably, we're at 180 mega hash and I think 1,050 watts comparably. So we are a little bit higher, but that same system with us is going to cost probably about the same, and we don't have to rely on you know the the bitmain to make it for us. Uh, the Chinese government to stop us from receiving it, uh, the ta taxation on receiving the goods. I mean, and uh, if Prog Pow comes out for eCash, they're useless, completely useless. So, you know, the same thing that happens with um, a lot of these algorithms that literally just fork and all these ASICs become useless, GPUs don't have that issue. And then the question, are you using like So we, we took the we took the hard route. We are in Florida, Tampa, Florida. Um, uh, we have during the summer 95 degree weather, 95 degree uh, Fahrenheit weather, 100% humidity, and this is inside a warehouse with a bunch of cars that are being worked on, running, the exhaust going through it. It gets really hot, but uh, we figured out a way. We compartmentalized it into a 10 foot shipping container. Uh, we have 320 GPUs. We have a patent pending airflow technology, and we literally have no liquid pooling. It's all airflow related. And again, with the patent pending airflow technology, we have figured out a way to literally not have one GPU failure uh, in the two years we've been mining. So we want to be able to make it so you don't have to be nice. You don't have to be in Canada. You can be in Colombia or Venezuela when cryptocurrency means more sometimes. We don't want to be. Uh, stuck by location, but it is in a 10-foot shipping container, so if you don't move it, it'll be hard. Uh, we currently work on ETH miner, so we just went the easy route. They, they, they did go 1% fee, but it's a beautiful question. So the question was about the 51% attack. Uh, is this related to Bitcoin specifically or just yeah. any? So with Bitcoin, it, it, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but at this point, unless somebody comes out with a miner that's you know, 100,000 time, 100, times more efficient than the ASICs that are out currently, which chip te technology doesn't even support that, and this one company owns all of it, to get 51% uh, attack, I guess, I mean, Bitmain, there was an issue with it because technically they have control of everything. They've sold it, they put like a, a Trojan horse in everything. I mean, I call that, it sounds malicious. It's not that too malicious. But um, if they turn all of their miners to a block, they could start mining a block and create a 51% attack and, and mess the ledger up. But to, to do this, I mean, it, it would cost probably hundreds of millions of dollars to end up with a couple million. It's it's just for Bitcoin at least. There is absolutely no way that it's worth it, and to keep it going is even less. Uh, for small uh, coins, even Monero or uh, you know Raven coin, with a couple million dollars, you really could control the network. But again, you're only going to make ten, twenty, thirty thousand for the couple that you spend. So fifty-one percent attack. It's really only an issue when pools have too big of a stake, uh, and they've sort of had a uh, an association that most pools are part of that say, okay, we're not going to have more than thirty percent or more than twenty percent, and now there's so many pools, it's it's really not an issue. Yeah. Um, can you describe specifically how ASICs differ from all other mining equipment? So. Um, I'm not a hardware guy. I mean, my background is mechanical engineering, so um, we, we do have an electrical engineer on staff that, that uh, really could get into, you know, the the array that they use and how the memory switches from uh, in the core to the to the uh, memory RAM and back and forth. And I, I know CPUs are the easiest to uh, send to an algorithm, but are the least efficient. 
and the GPUs are, because they're so uh, memory, most of these algorithms are memory intensive, <coughs> GPUs have obviously a lot of integrated memory, so uh, GPUs are better at that. FPGAs are sort of a programmable version of an ASIC that, I guess, I guess uh, again, I'm not an expert in this, but uh, it, it pretty much has a, uh, uh, depending on how efficient the chips are, you can send a certain amount of chips to that specific algorithm that needs to be mined, and then ASICs, you literally mint the chip to that exact algorithm. So again, if you fork or anything happens, the chip is useless, but that is the most efficient because you have 200, 300 chips on one board, all talking to each other, all working on the same uh, algorithm, and obviously that's going to be the most efficient. So ASICs are there's, there's nothing, I mean, ASICs are pretty much top tier. It explains the application-specific integrated circuit, which explains pretty much the most efficient, best way to mine cryptocurrency or, you know, that, that algorithm. So I don't know if that answered, but I'm not as... Anybody else? So I guess my question is, can you unpack that a little bit? Because um, I just I am having a hard time kind of visualizing. visualizing that. So so pretty much when I was talking about uh, wasted energy, I was almost specifically talking about um, uh, a space heater, which is literally you know positive in, negative out, and it, it just it's a coil that heats up. It's a, it's a resistor that gets hotter and hotter, and, and it, it has a fan on it that, that blows that hot air out, and it uh, heats the space. So um, in, in that aspect, I was just talking about cryptocurrency mining in general, uh, using uh, an actual process that can be profitable to uh, heat a space. And uh, obviously, it's going to be loud because there's fans, but you know there could be an efficient way. But it, uh, speaking of um, uh, you know solar and and, uh, and wind energy and hydro and hydroelectric, uh, I guess when I was talking about those specifically, I was just relating the the energy used. From you know Google and and uh, and Visa and Mastercard that they have you know these these uh, huge farms of servers that use mostly coal power because that's the cheapest and they get you know two or three cents a kilowatt hour and they're just pumping coal away creating more emissions for the environment versus a cryptocurrency mining operation, which article came out, they said 70 to 75 percent of cryptocurrency mining is um, uh, sustainable, which, you know, it, it, if you do or don't believe that, in the future, it's going to be required to be sustainable. You can't have an operation that is using, uh, you know, coal power and spending three cents a kilowatt hour. You're going to have to get to the point where you're at one or two cents a kilowatt hour, which only solar and only a uh, hydroelectric power plant that, that you own or have a stake in uh, can offer you. So uh, sustainability uh, in, in the, a broader term, I was just speaking of, um, you know, what's used currently to what cryptocurrency could provide. And then in the, in the small, small aspect of the space here, I was just talking about um, an individual, how they could, you know, create heat instead of uh, waste. Right, so I mean, you're almost like increasing the demand for more sustainable energy since there are such high energy requirements. Exactly, it, yeah, that's, that's exactly right, yeah, because it, it, extremely high demands for electricity. Awesome. All right, thank you so much.